Today is it's a big workout. We have 20 miles of volume. The first four miles are easy. Miles five to eight is at a 650 minute per mile pace. Miles nine to 10 are easy. Miles 11 to 14 are at a 645 minute per mile pace. Miles 15 to 16 are easy. And miles 17 to 20 is at a 640 minute per mile pace. This puts us about six weeks out from the marathon where I'm attempting to run a sub three hour. But essentially, after this morning, uh, we'll know if I'm ready for the sub three hour marathon. So this workout was the first workout of marathon prep at marathon pace. And these workouts will tell us if we're ready for the sub three hour marathon. So as you can imagine, this workout today, this, this run, I was nervous. It felt like a race, like the days leading into, the week leading into, and especially like the, the 48, 72 hours before, it felt like a race. Like it felt like I was prepping for a race. And I had those race jitters, I was nervous. And I wanted to replicate scenarios, environment, situations, so that when I have my race day, we're locked in, ready to go. Saturday morning, typically I'll do these long Saturday runs by myself, but Jeff Cunningham, my running coach, Natasha, my Ironman coach, they're coming here to support. Some of the other athletes I run with on Wednesdays, like downtown Austin on the track, they're coming here to pace me for some of this workout, just because it is a, it's a big workout, it's a key workout. This will be a big indicator if I can hold the paces I need to hold during the marathon, which is in about six weeks, like I said. So far this morning, I mean, right now it's 6.30 a.m. We're gonna take off here in a little bit to get started, but I've already had 100 grams of carbs and 1,000 milligrams of sodium. So I started this morning with um, one banana, an English muffin, two scoops of G1M Sport, and another electrolyte tab, added one, which gave me about 100 grams of carbs and 1,000 milligrams of sodium. The intent, quick, readily available energy, carbohydrate sources, and kind of just top off on sodium electrolytes to prevent cramping and to facilitate muscle contraction while you're running. Well, any vapor flies for this one? Oh. Those that you're gonna run in, uh, when you race, are you gonna do the sock? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna race in here. Yeah, right. This is the last time running, I'm gonna say it for the race. Yeah. All right. All week, I've been like nervous yeah, for this one. <laughs> last night, I was like super anxious for this run. I'm not. I'm not envisioning like a big break. Hopefully a continuous run. Now I mean stop, grab some fuel or whatever for a few sex, and then let's start that first four mile segment. Um, and the main thing is just don't overrun it. Uh, yeah, I get it. The weather's good. You could probably haul ass and run 6:30 pace for the first four, four mile segment. Probably even survive. But the question is, what are the next 48 hours going to look like yeah. right now? On the tail end, that last four mile section, if you're feeling good, you can put your foot into it a little bit without getting crazy, right? But what we're really trying to do is, is simulate um, all the way up to the 20 mile mark, pace that's at or just a little bit faster than what you're going to be running. Because at some point, we just have to sort of harden the sole and harden the legs to the realities of pounding out 650 pace or better on pavement, okay. you know? But at some point, you know, I mean, literally the rubber has to meet the road. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Because your body gets out there on race day and your body goes, I recognize this. I've done this. And then it's just a matter of hydration and calories and just managing the course on yeah. race day. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, you know. I'm, I'm fully set up right now nutrition wise with uh, last night, this morning. Yeah. I got 100 grams of carbs in me, 1,000 milligrams of sodium so far. I'm not a huge fan of trying to simulate a race in training a lot, but at some point, you know, there need to be these big workouts so that your body physiologically can get dialed in and physically endure sort of the challenges of what's going to be asked of it on race day. Yeah. No, I've right. I messed up in the past too, I haven't felt race pace mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a lot of miles going into, yeah. going into it. So this will be good. Major major mistake that I think I a lot of people make um, 
that it really holds them back is they just go out and jog the long runs and then try to do short workouts and then show up and say, I'm ready. Well, I mean, unless you've turned 640 pace two hours into a run, how in the bloody heck do you expect your body to recognize what that feels like when you're out there on race day? If you haven't ever run under 650 pace past 45 minutes or an hour into a run, it's, just, it's not, not gonna work, you know, so it'll be good. All right, let's go. Let's get started. So today's workout, uh, 20 miles, 20 miles total. And the way it was set up was four miles easy and then four miles hard at a 650 minute per mile pace, two miles easy, and then another four miles hard at a 640 minute per mile pace, and then two miles easy, and the last four miles at between a 6.30 and a 6.35 minute per mile pace was the intent. You know, I was super fortunate that, and super grateful, that the athletes that I run with every Wednesday, who are other athletes of Jeff Cunningham's, my run coach, they came Saturday to run with me. They didn't have to. They just showed up because we run every Wednesday together. They wanted to support. And when I saw them show up, and I knew they were going to be there, but just seeing like they were there when they didn't have to to support my marathon pace run felt so good. Like I was so appreciative of that. And I was seeing that the entire time we were running together. But Natasha was there as well, and she was on a bike. So she was carrying nutrition for me. What she was carrying, uh, I, I brought two extra bottles of G1M Sport to the workout. Each bottle had two scoops of G1M plus another electrolyte tab. So each bottle had 1,000 milligrams of sodium and 40 grams of carbohydrates. What ended up happening was Natasha throughout the, the run was handing me the bottles of G1M Sport to replenish, which I always use. And, yeah, it works perfect. both ran different gels um, but essentially what we're having him do is he's sipping on go one more sport um, for every mile and a half throughout and then uh, so he's gonna get through two two and a half bottles throughout the 20 mile run that's 24 ounces per bottle and then uh, we're having him take a gel every four miles along the way so I haven't done the math I will do the math on exactly how many calories and sodium how much uh, calories and sodium is taken but it's probably around 60 grams right now, I'd say. So yeah, trying to fuel and practice kind of um, taking in fuel on race day conditions and pacing. Chocolate or orange? Chocolate or orange? Oh, there you go. Okay, and then just drop the ball, okay? So he's running eight miles an hour. We're getting in, let's see, I'm gonna do the map. 20, 40. He's probably taking in around 60 to 70 grams of carbs an hour. Um, we'll probably want to get him to about 80 and see if he can tolerate that. 
but this is way more than he's used to taking, so he's gonna feel pretty good taking the 60 to 70. And then the sodium, he's probably getting 700, about a thousand milligrams, so it's under what he is losing, but it's also pretty cool outside today. I mean, it's 30 degrees and raining, so I think we should be good. Yeah, you? Yeah, just toss it. Okay. segment target was 645 and they're hitting 640 640 643 and then we'll find out what that final mile was so now he has two miles easy and he has one more four mile segment at 640 target good Solid. good yeah after that first set you know there, there were three main sets at marathon pace or faster that I had to accomplish during this workout. When I was in the middle of the second set, I knew I was like, I have this, like I feel so solid, I feel so good. And it was this massive confidence booster where I was just having fun. Like I went into this workout a little nervous because I wanted to perform. I was nervous because I wanted to perform at my highest level. But when I was midway through, when I hit mile 10, at that point, I was just having fun with the other athletes I was running with. It's the best way to describe it, I was just having fun. Because we were having so much fun, you know, Tyler, Yoli, and Steph are driving this course recording us. And it starts raining on us. It's probably 34 degrees at this point, but we're just having fun. And I yelled at Yoli, I was like, turn the music up. Like, we just want to enjoy, like, live in the moment of this run. Hey, Yoli. Yes, sir. Uh, drive next to us to play music. Play music? Yeah. Okay. Yoli's jacking up the music in the truck, and we're like rocking out to Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> You know, you get to a point when you're running and you're in really good shape and your fitness has been built and you're running with other athletes who fitness is being built over time together and you're building fitness together during these workouts, during these runs, and you're all getting this runner's high. And that's the best way to describe the last half of this workout is we all just started acquiring and, and picking up this runner's high. at 18 and a half miles and you know today is an interesting confluence of like two of the biggest things that you have to have to be an endurance athlete which is both restraint and toughness and he's done really well so far um we're pretty much the hard work is done at this point he's just he's just flying along here probably under 640 miles speed looks like coming down this stretch um you know and it's just a combination of um, restraint early on. Um, we're doing 20 miles today, so you can't run too hard. Um, but at the same time, we got to start hardening the legs to the reality of running 650 pace um, ish, you know, to break three hours in the marathon. And you got to be able to do that and run those kinds of paces two hours plus in in workout, or it's not going to happen on race day. Um, there are no accidents in endurance sports um, there's no luck um, and that's the beautiful thing because we can control the controllables um, and we don't have to rely on, 
on luck. It's not like we're throwing a one-handed full court shot hoping to make a basket at the buzzer. That's not what we're doing here. And we can't train like that because I can tell you hope's not a plan. It's not a plan in this business at all. You've either done the work or you haven't. So today's a great day. It looks like he's going to end up exceeding the parameters of the workout by just a little bit. Um, and that's okay because his effort level's been perfect. Perfect today. I can't ask for any more. So let's check them here. Looks like we have maybe about a three quarters of a mile left right here. This workout was the first time I used gels in over a year, which ended up being almost detrimental um, to the, the workout itself. As soon as I started using the gels, I could feel it in my stomach. Like I could, I could feel them hitting my stomach and it just, it didn't feel right. When I hit mile, so it was like 17.5, it was my last working set of the, the run of the workout. I was searching for a bathroom as fast as possible. Yeah, I think. Like I could not find a bathroom fast enough where I'm running with the team, with the group, and we're going to this last set feeling solid. And I, I stopped, I didn't stop, but I broke up the conversation and I said, hey guys, I'm gonna have to peel off and run into someone's backyard because I'm about to, like I was, I was feeling it in my stomach. We got like less than a, we got like a I half know, mile left. I know. Yeah. So just check the camera. You okay? You hanging in there? I think it was awesome. <laughs> less than a half mile to go. <laughs> Put in a, a lot of calories, of some sugars, um, these calories uh, today during the run. And it's not feeling too good, but um, the legs are fine. The legs are fine. That's okay. We'll take that. Man, he made it. He made it uh, within a half mile of finishing. It has to go to the bathroom. Don't say, put that one on camera. As some would say, soft, right? Ah, soft. he's soft. He's soft. It's gonna be. Um, luckily, we ran into a porter potty, like within a half mile. Ran into the porter potty really quick. Was in and out in a matter of probably twelve seconds. Back on course. Back running. <laughs> Like that last mile, the last two miles, it was me, Josh, and Keegan. Well, that last mile, I knew to send it. Jeff told me to send it. really off I think when he said two point I thought he said 2.25 a while ago and I I maybe he maybe he said 0.25 I don't know I it's been a wild morning a little bit, little bit mild, mildly chaotic but nothing that, that's that's too bad <laughs> chaotic for the coach not for the runners they've been smooth. sub 620 right now I felt almost just as good, if not better, than the first mile ran. I finished my last mile at a 608 minute per mile pace, which wasn't even full out. Like I could have run faster and my legs were still feeling fresh. And I finished that run feeling better than I have after five mile runs, six mile runs, seven mile runs, eight mile runs. Good job, Nick. 
kick. Good. Good job. It was a run where as soon as it was, it was finished, I almost didn't want it to stop. I wanted to keep running after it because we were on such a high. 20 miles complete. We did a 7.09 minute per mile pace overall. Two hours, 23 minutes, eight seconds. Um, based off Garmin calories burned, 2,390. I'll go over my splits here in a second. Go meet up with the team. I just want to say a massive thank you to all the athletes who I train with on Wednesdays to come and pace me. Do this one with me. It was solid. Like, built a lot of confidence going into this marathon coming up. So, 20 miles complete. 608 last mile. 608. Yeah, 608. Yeah. But you see what happens when you stay restrained on the front end yeah. and don't overrun it early and you hit your calories, you stay hydrated, you know, and then you get to mile 20 and you run 608. Yeah. And I felt like that last two miles, I felt solid. Yeah. I, I didn't feel, I'm not tired right now. Like, right, I know. 20 miles to feel fresh. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. You didn't overrun things and overextend physi physiologically yeah. at the beginning of the workout and then you had gas left in the tank. Yeah. All we gotta do is keep progressing. We still got several weeks to go. Um, I don't see any impediment to you being able to hit what you want to hit. That was great. <laughs> Perfectly executed. You know, you walk away from this going, okay, okay. It's confidence booster for sure. Confidence booster for sure. Yeah. Because everything up to this point had been um, perfectly executed, mm -hmm. um, flawless, every single workout. Some amazing things are about to happen in 2021. Oh, I'm excited. That, that, was, that was solid. Yep, yep, yep. God, that was great. good. I'm fired up, man. You know, I mean, you get excited as a coach. Holy crap, and I've Yikes. got hot coffee. Oh, man. I'm going to go with this one right here. This one's looking very good. <laughs> that All right, well, good. donut, well-deserved <laughs> after 20-mile run this morning. I'm feeling solid. Like, I, feel, I feel fresh right now. I could easily do another 6.2 miles. Um, that was just a, we'll talk about it in the truck, but it was solid. I'm happy with it. I'm very happy. So we just got back to the HQ after finishing the 20 mile run and I feel fresh. Um, super, super happy with that performance. Like very happy. It's a big confidence booster going into the marathon. And I really appreciate the athletes that I train with every, every Wednesday morning to come out and support me on that run. And for Jeff and Natasha, Yoli, Tyler, Steph, all supporting it. it was, uh, I am just very grateful and appreciative of that. So let's go over the paces. Um, as you guys know, the first four miles were like a warm up. They were easy. Uh, first mile, 846. Then it was a 755, 745, and then a 758. And then the next four miles were to be at 650 pace. Ended up being 651, 648, 641, 650. Then another two miles easy, which was 748 and 739. Another four miles hard, which we were trying to hold at a 645 pace, 640, 640, 645, 642. Another two miles easy at 749, 730. And the last four miles to be, uh, originally supposed to be 640, but Jeff said I could take it up to 635, 640. So it was 635, 634, 638. And then the last mile, mile 20, 608 minute per mile pace. And ended that 20 miles still feeling fresh. If I didn't, if I didn't drop the pace into the 635s for those last four, and I held 650 for, for those, um, I could have easily gone, easily, another 6.2 miles. So in two weeks, we have another 20 plus mile workout. And then two weeks after that, we have another 20 plus mile workout similar to this, where we're working marathon pace for longer distances, but performance today, um, exactly where I wanted it to be. I treated today like race day, where, you know, this whole week, just nutrition, hydration, electrolyte consumption, recovery on point, 
yesterday, all day yesterday. I started getting like the, the pre-race jitters. This morning, treated it like race day and executed like race day. So solid, super happy with that. I think Jeff said it best where you can't do these track workouts, do these tempo workouts, run your easy miles, and then go into a marathon expecting to know what a 650 minute per mile pace feels like when you're rounding the corner at mile 22. You have to know what 650 minute per mile pace or faster feels like when you're at mile 20, 21, 22, and further. So running smart, training smart, running confident, knowing you can hold those paces, that's what these big workouts are meant to do. And that's what today accomplished. What's funny is, you know, I finished that workout feeling so good and hopped in the truck on a all-time high. And Natasha called me as soon as I got my truck, said, how you feeling? So I feel great. One of the best runs I've ever had. Probably the best run I've ever had in my life to this date. And she said, I need you to hop on the bike for a little bit when you get home, flush those legs out, be ready to go because Monday we're back at it. We're back training. So that was the plan. As soon as the run was finished, get some rest, get some food, hop back on the bike. All right, guys, well, Coach Natasha brought in a little special surprise on this Friday for the VPN team. Valerie Hunt is here. She drove from Dallas, Texas area, and she's working with us, the entire VPN team, to improve our running form. That's so weird. The moment has come to illuminate the open turn and introduce the flip turn.